Alright, time for a Lee Sin Beginner's Guide. I'm against a Echo, which should be a fine matchup for me. He doesn't invade early, he can't fight me early. I don't really have anything to worry about. Um, yeah. This is a lower rated game, it is a beginner's guide, so we're playing against low silver here. I just want this to be this elo for the... Oh, interesting fight. For the purpose of it being low elo, you want the same teammates, I want the same opponents, so people that are starting out can see like how you can abuse those types of things, and yeah, that's really that. Um, Alright, so lane wise here, we have Sion against Garen top. I mean, the gank there is really not gonna happen. I'm just gonna go for a bot side, especially now. There's a bunch of summoners used there. We know Leona doesn't have flash. I don't know about Zeri. I don't know what she used. Uh, but... I should be able to get a good bot lane gank in here, though. Because uh, they're probably gonna have pressure, I would imagine. Even if they're not, like... There's definitely summoners used there. Leona doesn't not having flash does allow her to be an easier kill at the same time. So we'll see. I'm gonna go for that nice bot clear on this one. Starting W here, this saves you the most HP, basically. Because you essentially have the most sustain, have the extra shield. Just a bunch of auto-attacks starting it out slow. You just want to go for a full clear, generally speaking. Even if you're playing an early game champion like Lee Sin is considered to be. Uh, just full clearing is definitely what I would still recommend you to do. Uh, seeing as how it gives you a consistency of le being level 4 after it. And a lot of pl players or junglers in this elo don't even do that. They just go for like random gank opportunities and then they fill that gank and they're instantly like super far behind. And if you just get the consistency of a full clear in, most situations you will create a lead for yourself. Which is, uh, yeah, the goal mainly. I'm gonna make sure I keep auto attacking these small ones every so often to get the jungle tick on them, the burn tick on them. This way they, they mostly die in the burn damage. Doesn't matter how slow your full clear is, as long as you just full clear, you should be fine. Use the E here. As soon as you have all of your abilities, you don't have to worry as much about, like, getting those two hits in between every single ability, because you have way more abilities to use, essentially. So it should basically end up being fine. Try to let the smaller ones die to, like, burn damages as much as you can to save yourself whatever seconds you can by, like, queuing towards the next camp, for example. Using Q a little early here to get the cooldown back in time to use the Q dash over the wall for the Krux to save myself time walking. Just right here, using it right now, I'll have it up instantly. I'm smiting right away before the second Q connects because the damage goes up when the HP is lower. And yeah, another thing about Lee Sin this game that I'm not going to do any fancy insect kicks or ward hops. They are necessary. They're good in situations, but you don't have to use them. And I think those are the things that people are tripped up by the most, essentially. So I'll just not use them. I'll, the, the only thing I'll use is a simple ward hop. I need to wait for that minion to die because it has vision over this area. Is this warded? They're suddenly walking super far back. I wonder if Try is actually warded. I'm just gonna do scuttle then. I don't really have a good support to engage with. Like if I had like a Nautilus or something, that could be much easier to actually get the gank off, but I don't. So we're just gonna be able to play safe for a bit. I will master the dragon spirit or die trying. Interesting. Let's see if I can get in mid lane here. How about Echo missed time to stun as well. I think I should be able to get the echo here. Ah! I hate it here. I was trying to predict his dash properly there, but I didn't. So I missed flash queued him essentially. I mean, it's just a bad skill shot on my end, of course, and that's really all it is, but yeah. I actually thought he was gonna like dash or flash upwards, but he didn't do that. And ends up working out fine, honestly. And my main priority there is just like get in on the Yasuo first. Pick whoever the target is. You don't want to split the damage. You just want to pick a target and commit to that target as much as you can when you're going for ganks. Also, try and to walk in as close as possible to actually hit your abilities. Like, trying the max range snipe cues is generally not advised. Because it's going to go wrong more often than not. 
Right, so instead of backing right away, I'm actually going to clear this half of my jungle again. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to be backing when my entire jungle is essentially up. I want to be backing when I have like some stuff on cooldown, some stuff respawning. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to clear this half and then recall and then go for like the bot side camps afterwards. Uh, bot lane echo did a pretty nice gank there. It's good for him. I got the, I got two control wards with this. Got a bunch of wards to hop with. He invested quite some time towards bot side there. I'm not just going to clear my Krugs. Unfortunately, won't be able, won't be able to gank bot lane with this opportunity. Because uh, they're just backing right now. Echo is quite low, so I don't think he's going to do much right now. But him getting that those kills on bolt's pretty good for him. Or that kill on bolt, I suppose. If you have your smite ready to go, just use it. Especially if you don't have a red smite yet. You might as well just use it on anything. Like, unless you know you're gonna go for like a dragon soon, but I'm not gonna do that. And then you can hold your smite for like the dragon objective, otherwise just use it on any camp, it doesn't matter. As long as you get like the 450 damage value out of it, you're generally fine. Making sure to let the small- I don't hit the small ones here, I'm just gonna let them die to tick damage and like my next E potentially. Let's go for top scuttle. I definitely think I'm just gonna walk for top scuttle here. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. To explain that play, essentially, if you look back at it, if you, you can, if you want, I wait for my for the echo to actually dash over the wall before I follow him with Q, so I have the opportunity to follow him for free, essentially. Then I make sure I don't like use my kick until he gets low enough to where the kick would actually do kill damage. Because I don't want to accidentally kick him away and then Yone not like miss some of his Qs or miss his damage and that would be a problem situation. And then like on the last set situation of that play, I basically just uh, used my shield on the guy. Like on the uh, Yone to try to like shield him from damage. And after... Okay, he flashed. He's gonna follow that up, that's fine. Pretty nice. Uh, yeah, so that's basically how I did that play. And then as soon as I get in like melee range, essentially with Frodo Yasso to guarantee my Q hit, I use Q then. So it was really like a calm, waited out play, wait for him to dash before I follow with Q, use my shield to like try to save the Yone. It wasn't really going to happen there though, but yeah. Same thing on top lane again. Like waiting for like a slow before I throw my Q, like I he flashed my Q essentially. And then there as well, again on the last situation, like using my W to close in the distance on Sion when he was about to like, when he had CC'd him and I can close the distance instantly. Uh, he's just gonna recall right now. The thing you wanna max second on Lee Sin is your shield, because the shield value goes up quite a bit and you don't need the additional damage from like an E increase, but the shield increase is actually very good. Because it allows you to save, like if I had more points in shield here, I could have potentially saved like the Yone. Th those sides of situations will come up quite a bit. I cleared a half of my jungle again, and then I press recall again instead of doing the other half, because I have quite a lot of gold, and I do have my Gore Drinker right now. Ooh, that's a good check from the Yone there. It's gonna be good here. The boots I want in this game is for sure, like, steel caps, because they're all auto-attack or, like, auto-attack based. I guess apart from Echo, but he still does quite a bit of auto-attack, so it'd still be good to get the uh, Tabais here. He is going into Narnia. I don't know if this Narnia play from him is actually gonna work out well for him, but... I'm just gonna do a red buff right now. Like, I normally would do Crux first, but I actually want to do red first here to potentially look for, like, a play. On bot. To have red buff ready for the play, essentially. Uh, let's see... Keep an eye out on the situation. Right, Leona, we see her here. We can just use this to close the distance. Walk it in as close as possible, and then again there. Like, I would have waited with my Q, but I knew my Q was gonna kill there, no problem. So the waiting there with Q is unnecessary. As long as you know it kills, it doesn't matter if you wait for her to dash over the wall or flash over the wall or not. It wouldn't change anything. But as you saw right there, just a simple ward hop, close to distance on him. He's instantly screwed. Gonna kick him into my team, honestly. I think that should be okay. Really? 
Interesting. I guess my play didn't pan out exactly how I wanted to. I wanted to kick him into my team to just doom him, but he actually, like, got away with that one pretty pretty well. But yeah, those ward hops, like, I'm just using very basic ward hops to, like, reposition myself, and that's it. Like, no Q into ward hop or anything of the sort, no anything else, just some ward hops. Right there, I, had, I landed the Q on Echo from max range, essentially, and I just flashed into range. So I can flash into the range for the Q to connect with the Echo. He was low enough to where he was basically going to die, so he was forced to ult backwards, or he would just die in general. So, that's, yeah, that's basically the play I made there. I don't want to look for this bot situation here. This guy is definitely just gone. I can't get to him in time. I have no idea if this is warded or not. It's actually good. Focus focus the whoever is just the easiest kill first. Killing Leona first is there definitely the best play. I feel like she should really be just basing. I'll push in the wave here. Just give it to whoever wants it. I have to be careful in this situation because their mid and their jungler could definitely just be here. This misfortune should be backing as well. Like, greeting there doesn't do anything for her. It, it, high likelihood that he just does Rift Herald here, which would be probably the best play he could make. So we'll see about that. They're mostly AD, so I'm just gonna go for the uh, Death's Dance first here. Sterax is an option on Lee Sin, even after the changes, due to Lee Sin having 130 base AD on level 18, which ends up being like 52 attack damage you basically get off the item. Which is definitely not bad, but it's not better than going like Death's Dance, and it would only be good as like a late game item, so like 5th or 6th, when you like starting getting close to like level 18 and stuff, to get the most value out of the Sterax. So we're not gonna do that. Generally, like as a magic resist item now as well, if you're going a little bit more damage heavy, going for Maw is just better. And you can't buy Maw and Sterax both, because they both have a lifeline passive, so that wouldn't work. Just something to keep note of. I'll just clear the ward here. Using an ability here that's... I'm using my E there because that's like the least likely ability I'm actually going to need. If I use my W there, I would basically waste my opportunity to dash or like dash out of situations essentially. I'm gonna go mid here. I feel like his wind wall should be on cooldown. The thing I'm doing first there is I'm prioritizing the... Um, that's a little bit annoying. But he actually killed himself. What he just did there was not a good, not a smart play. Due to him wasting his ult, like he actually had like ways to fight me there. If he doesn't just ult like right away, because that ult essentially using it killed him. And this would be a pretty good opportunity to just do the rift herald. Q it over the wall. Make sure I don't get spotted by the uh, thingy here. The reason I'm doing Rift Herald here is because it cannot be stopped, essentially, and this will allow me to easily break mid turret as well. You don't actually want to hold on to Rift Herald for that long on Lee Sin, due to uh, it being pretty bad in combination with your, like, ward hops. So generally, like, using it quite quickly is what you want to do. And since he just killed mid, I'm just going to use it right now, actually. Him getting that one-on-one -on -one kill there is actually good, because I'm just going to pop the Rift Herald down instantly. And then we're just gonna be able to push like two turrets in mid right now. Actually good that we killed it before it bounced. Prevents it from losing HP. This way we can actually get the second, like this push going here essentially. He doesn't have ult so he can't fight me. Oh, I thought he was gonna ult back but he didn't. All right, that works out pretty well. Right there, as you see, I'm like, I'm deliberately using my skills as sparingly as possible. Like the right, the, the Q hit that I did was essentially, be, or the, the max range Q that I threw was essentially just because he didn't really have any way to escape that Q, apart from like dashing to the side with his E or something, but he wasn't gonna do that at that point anymore. 
So the Q was essentially just a free hit. Really be deliberate about those skill shields. It's going to be super important. And as you can see right here, I'm also just keeping up on my jungle rotations. Like, I'm making sure I clear the bolt half of my camps before I now take the recall. Uh, having this bolt half done is going to be quite important. For the similar situation, you don't want to recall. I have, I have a lot of gold, right? I don't want to recall when I have, like, my entire jungle up. Because that would not be too effective. Or too efficient. Sorry, that's the better word for it. So this actually works, works out being, like, fine for me. Mm, don't need this HP potion anymore, so I'm just going to get another long sword. Echo's probably gonna go for Drake here. Mm, gonna have to run bolt. I wanted to go topside, but this play basically just means I kind of have to go bolt. The, luckily, the uh, Jinx got the kill on Zeri, which actually ends up being pretty good. But I have to go bolt here due to the bolt lane play. Which is okay, I think. I can just kill them both here. Same thing here, just a simple ward hop close to distance. Doesn't really matter if I hit that or not. I'm gonna kick him back so he's just in an awkward position. Again, be patient there, wait it out. Wait out the fact that he, he has to ult, right? Like, he's either t taking free damage on third or he just dies. Like, he, he needs to ult. So I can just hold my Q the entire time instead of instantly following him. Because if I instantly follow him, he could, like, try to, like, juke me out distance-wise. So I would dash in with Q and then he would just ult out like after that and then essentially like have close the distance where I can't kill him anymore. So if I just hold the position in that situation, there's not much he can do to do anything really. He just dies. Uh, by the way, getting blue on Lee Sin's actually pretty nice because it gives energy sustain as well in case you didn't know that. If you have energy sustain like Lee Sin and Zed and stuff, it's actually pretty nice because it helps you out quite a bit. Let's see if I can... No, I cannot hit that apparently. I can hit that one. Kick that guy away. I'm not gonna allow Zeri to hit me for free. That's not something I'm looking for. So I kicked the Zarian way instead of kicking the Leona. Is that rocket gonna kill him? No, I didn't hit. Okay, never mind. So I just kicked the Zarya away, hit the Leona with the Q, because I'm pretty sure I would have killed the Leona, no problem. It's just that I don't want to get perma hit by the Zary. It's time to clear my topside camps that I've been uh, not doing for a while. But at least this way, like, I, I was able to, like, get my bolt camps to respawn and stuff. I was in this situation a little forced to actually go for that bot lane play. To not like basically skip out on my topside cams, which sometimes happens. But at least you know the setup was there, right? Like I was setting it up to be the, the play into the topside camps and to like looking for anything there. Making sure here that I keep farming. As you can see, 154 CS is quite significant here. And that's all just because I keep like the rotations consistent. Making sure that I don't back when every single camp in the jungle is up. To not lose out on too much time, essentially. I have Death's Dance here, so backing. You have to be a little bit careful when, you're ha when you have this. Because the bleed tick from it essentially prevents you from backing quite often. Uh, let's go for Hex Drinker. We're going for Maw next. Uh, it's pretty nice to have like a magic resist item, especially against something like Echo, because Echo does quite a significant amount of damage. But it's probably the only magic resist item I'm gonna need this game. Like I can definitely opt for like a, um, I don't know, just another armor item here. Frozen Heart would even not be too bad. It's like uh, Frozen Heart's still pretty good, even though I don't have mana, because the item is just super valuable. The attack speed reduction actually does quite a bit against that team. But like random ones would work as well for crit reduction against like Yasuo. For example, so there are things. Now in this stage of the game, you don't want to be farming your own camps anymore. You're just basically going to look for the opponent's jungler's camps and just hunt them down as much as you can. Like anything that's in his jungle, is, you should try it to make it yours, essentially. So we're just checking everything that's down, that's not a problem. But we're making sure that the echo doesn't get any farm anymore. 
So denying him overall does more. I do want to get this red buff. Oh. Like red buff is basically the only thing I would back up for and actually take on my own jungle. But I want to spend as little time in my own jungle now as possible, essentially. If my teammates want to take my camps right now, that would be okay. Because so I'm going to just try to hunt the Echo as much as possible. Be in his face the entire rest of this game, essentially, so he doesn't get to farm it up. That is the goal. I'm walking past Raptors. I'm close to a level up, so I'm making sure I get the level up right now. Going to be a quite a deadly stun there for misfortune. Good. It's fine. Fine. See if I can find somebody here. I might be able to use this ward as a bait. I could technically go in on that, but I would have no backup, so that would make things pretty awkward. Uh, right now, what I can just do is take his wolves and take his grump, because I know they're basically going to be up. Also, I have to keep in mind that Jinx is just straight up on my Krux, so she wouldn't be able to follow anything up right now, since her positioning for follow-ups is pretty bad. Look for Scuttle. Like, you see me pressuring his camps, you see me, like, taxing him as much as possible, playing in his face wherever I can. Essentially not allowing him any, like, breathing room, so he doesn't get back in the game, so he doesn't get the farm, stuff like that. So there's spotted topside right now, so I can actually just, like... I'm gonna hit this ward first, because the vision of this is gonna disappear pretty soon. I'm prioritizing holding my W when I'm clearing stuff as well, because I want to have the dash ready, the Warthog out ready in case they do engage on me. My damaging abilities are less important in those situations where you're, like, you're in enemy territory clearing wards, so try to prioritize, if you want the attack speed boosts, try to prioritize using your damaging skills over using your escape, essentially. Yeah, blech. Don't like that. The support just took my blue buff. It's actually kind of annoying. This guy's going for Leandries on Misfortune? Really? Interesting. Garen is top. This would be a pretty bad fight situation for us. Have to be careful. Zeri mid. I don't want to go too aggressive here. This could end really badly, really fast. Because they have more people on this side of the map than we have. So going for anything here would not be too great. Ooh. I'm actually forced to do this now. I'm see so you can see here, I'm walking it into the range as much as possible. Uh this champion is annoying as hell. Okay, she made a mistake. She messed up by walking towards the ward. She couldn't really know, but that was her mistake. Okay, good. Good. I'm walking it into close range as much as possible, and I'm trying to leave as little to chance as I can by like throw not throwing max range Qs. Now this was a max range Q, but it was only a max range Q when he was already slowed, and he already used his flash, so he really has no way to dodge that anymore, so it's not really a Q that I left a chance. It was just whatever, you know? So keeping all that in mind is really what I'm doing right now. At this point, like, I killed them. I Instead of like like pressuring for a random bot turret. I'm actually gonna deny the echo as much as I possibly can by taking all of his camps. I, I value this more over like getting this turret, for example. Let's go up here. It's fine. I'm not gonna go for any random insect kicks. I have 4,000 gold, I would like the base. I'm gonna use like the double thing. I'm just gonna ward the Baron whilst also just using this as a gap closer for the scuttle here. Making sure to actually just pick up the uh, top side of my camps now still. I do have quite a bit of gold, but I don't really have to worry about anything. Gonna make sure I get these camps. Whilst I like, I have the opportunity to kill these camps. I'm actually gonna do it. 
Because the dragon's not going to be a problem for a little bit. And then also, like, Baron is not something we can play for at the moment since my half my team is in base. So I'm taking a little bit of this time to actually clear my camps now. Just ha I just have that opportunity here in this situation. I should be able to purchase this. And then I will go for a Guardian Angel for a second life into a random ones, I think. Since they're pretty, like, getting the armor extra is good. And this guy's crit based. Uh, he's going for like a crit setup as well. So uh, having all this crit is going to be better. They're actually starting Baron like absolute maniacs. Like you could also go like double magic resist. And instead of going for this, you can go for like uh, some, uh, spirit visits, for example. That would be fine as well. Or you cannot go for a Guardian Angel. If you need more armor penetration, for example, you can like skip out on Guardian Angel or get Guardian Angel and Cleaver instead of getting like an extra defensive item. That would be fine as well. But I'm definitely not worried about damage. I'm more so worried about like actually... Um... Oh, I kicked that into his wind wall, didn't I? The only thing I'm worried about is surviving, really. So that's the only thing I'm gonna like build something for, build a little bit more defensive. I don't have any ward hops at the moment, which kind of sucks. Oh, okay, well, that's fine. Keeping the pressure up in this jungle. Like, my team is taking his camps now as well, which is good. But, yeah. Actually, he dashed outside of third range, so I can actually just jump in still. I have a ward hop to just hop out for now, so it would not be too bad if I jump in. This late in the game, you do have to be a little bit more careful with your overall ward hops. Because you don't have, like, a place in your inventory for a bunch of control wards anymore. So having like, you really need to look at your trinket if you actually have some ward hops ready to go for certain plays. Where like this in play would be pretty aggressive. If I don't have like a simple ward hop out, that would be pretty bad for us. We just definitely go for soul here. Ah. I, don't, I still don't like giving the blue away because the energy sustain is actually really nice. Like the additional energy sustain. I am getting so close to this. I guess going red buff is what I'm gonna do now. Don't really have anything to back for, because I mean, the only thing I can back for is Randuins, and I'm probably not gonna get enough gold for that for a while. But I definitely do want to get the red buff, so. Just pick up this red real quick, and then we'll just go for something on the map again. We still have Baron for a while, so uh, he's also recalling. I guess I could have just taken the time to back. Oh my god, I... The fact that I needed the, just that cannon to get my uh, random ones actually really blows. I'm just gonna have to stall for a while. I don't get the chance to back anymore now, because my team is basically on the map prepared to go for a certain place. So I, I don't have no more time to back. I probably wouldn't have even been able to recall even if I got the cannon there, if I'm being honest, due to the situation. He flashed it, that's fine, I guess. All I'm doing this game, like, the only thing I've done when it comes to ward hops is just close some distance. That's literally it. No insects, no other fancy tricks, just a simple ward hop. That's all you need. Like, you don't need anything else but that. Fully send the work. Fine. I guess like, that moment, for example, if you do have, like, a, like a, a ward hop up, you could... Yeah, ward hop up, sorry, you could instantly insect kick that. Because you can kill, close the distance and then, like kick the Zeri into your team, for example, or kick the Yasuo into your team and you would win the play. I'm gonna kick him there so he doesn't get the ult. I actually don't know if this is gonna time out well. I did, okay, good. But those plays are generally not that necessary. The higher reload you go, the more necessary it becomes, but yeah. Alright, that's it for Lee Sin. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button as well. And subscribe for more. See you guys in the next one. Bye.